This is Ty Green. The revealing of the Antichrist is one of the events within biblical eschatology that serves as a time marker for events that preceded and events that come afterwards. I want to share an observation as we are looking for the appearing of Jesus Christ, Yeshua HaMashiach. As we watch for the appearing of the Lord, many get discouraged as we see things fall apart around us. We know through scripture that it's going to fall apart around us and that things will get worse. But fear not, Jesus Christ is coming. Now, I want to share on how the revealing of the Antichrist and the preceding events, which includes the upcoming collapse, can help to bookend the event of the rapture of the church. The transition into the time of the tribulation and Israel's 70th week will be tough, but those in Christ will not see the trib nor the 70th week. I gotta say this again, the transition into the time of the tribulation and Israel's 70th week will be tough. It's a transition. But those in Christ at the moment of the harpazo, hallelujah, will not see the trib nor the 70th week. Praises be to the Lord. The transition will be tough, but please don't mistake the tough time for being in the tribulation or the 70th week. Let's get into this topic that the Antichrist is expected in the fall. But what I want to share is why I believe it's not this fall. The importance of this points to the time of the rescue, no matter what year it happens. The sequence of events remain the same. When we look at the feast days, the appointed times of the Lord that are outlined within Leviticus chapter 23, we know that some events occur during the fall feasts. These are to involve the second coming of Christ. As we know, Satan perverts the things of God. He will mock the second coming of Christ to set up his kingdom to reign upon the earth in person. Many ignore this, but Satan does pervert the second coming of Christ. During the tribulation, Satan is upon the earth. His kingdom is described as a beast. That beast is eventually personified in the Antichrist. And there is also a false prophet. Those three form the unholy trinity. Because we can see the continued perversion of things of God by Satan, we can see clear patterns. Look at this. The feasts of the Lord outlined within Leviticus 23 are the appointed times of the Lord, which foreshadow what Jesus Christ will do relative to those feasts. And he does it on the exact day. Passover, unleavened bread, first fruits, the death, burial, and resurrection of Christ. All of these on the exact day. This was followed up by Pentecost. This represents the church. It has a time span relative to its harvest associated with that feast. It's wheat. More on that and the wheat harvest in another video. When we get to the fall feasts, this represents the second coming of Christ. Therefore, would not the revealing of the Antichrist be expected in the fall? The connection to the Antichrist is that he does something that starts the clock for the 70th week. We see this event in Daniel chapter 9 verse 27 when he confirms the covenant with many. We can also see the connection to the third temple with the sacrifices and oblations. This is connected to the expectations of the non-believing Jews in regards to what they call the final redemption. Please remember, 
there are Jews that are believers in Christ. The Jews that do not believe in Christ are expecting two messiahs, one of which is expected in the fall. And guess when? On a feast day. Now, watch this. On the Feast of Trumpets, Yom Teruah, look at what's expected. Rosh Hashanah 11a. On Rosh Hashanah, our forefathers' slavery in Egypt ceased. In Nisan, the Jewish people were redeemed from Egypt. And in Tishri, in the future, the Jewish people will be redeemed in the final redemption with the coming of the Messiah. See, the Talmud is not the word of God, yet these rabbinical writings are held in high regard amongst the Orthodox Jews. Can you now see how our adversary would use this to pervert the things of God and to deceive the non-believing Jews? This is more support to the thought that the Antichrist shows up in the fall. So what event happens before the Antichrist is on the scene? Yes, the rapture, but what else? The collapse, then the rise of the ten kings, right? Daniel 7, 23 and 24. Remember this? Thus he said, the fourth beast shall be the fourth kingdom upon earth, which shall be diverse from all kingdoms and shall devour the whole earth and shall tread it down and break it in pieces. And the ten horns out of this kingdom are ten kings that shall arise and another shall rise after them. And he shall be diverse from the first and he shall subdue three kings. My point is, could the collapse followed by the recovery with those appointed ten leaders in place, then the Antichrist on the scene could all of that happen by Tishri, Yom Teruah of this year? I think it's highly unlikely. It's only a few months out. The wheat harvest is gathered within its season, but it appears to be under duress. It's really a Red Sea moment for the body of Christ. And we gain this from Revelation 12, verse 4 and 5. Yet and still, it's debatable whether the harpazo is before or after the collapse. We remain ready. We remain aware. Either way, come Lord Jesus. We want to go right now, but are we under duress? In some parts of the world, we are as believers in Christ. But I'm not so sure if this qualifies as a Red Sea moment yet. Revelation 12, 4, folks, if when they come down, we go up, I don't believe it happens simultaneously. But that positioning relative to Israel and the body of Christ is key. That duress in verse 4 points to a Red Sea moment for the body of Christ. The rescue follows in verse 5. Most of us are clear on the wheat harvest season and what it represents. But after the harvest has been gathered into his barn, the AC shows up. But the collapse and the ten are in position first. Be prepared to go through this summer. Be prepared to go through the fall and winter season. I want to be clear. There is a pre-tribulation rapture. Yet some of what we could see would cause some to question that. And I'm trying to encourage you with details that you can review within scripture and observe. As things crumble and get worse around us, think about how this is what we're leaving behind. The world is going to shambles, but we're going to leave it behind. We're watching the sequence of events unfold right before our eyes. 
I had hoped that they would happen faster, just like many of you. I thought we would be gone by now. But then I remember how many of you have shared with me the concern of the salvation of loved ones. I have loved ones too that are not saved. They don't see the need for a savior and they are comfortable in their sin. And then I think about this, 2 Peter 3 and 9. The Lord is not slack concerning his promise, as some men count slackness, but is long suffering to usward, not willing that any should perish, but that all should come to repentance. Yeah, there's still a little bit of time if we are looking at the sequence of events outlined within Scripture. If we're uncertain about how we understand Psalm 90, Revelation 12 confirms that this is the time frame. So understanding that is essential. Don't be worried. Don't become shaken by the events coming up. Soon we in Christ will leave it all behind. I'm going to leave it right here. Till we meet again, live holy before the Lord. Love y'all. Shalom.